Ooh, let's try that again. Good morning, class. Welcome to what might be my favorite day of the whole year because we're going to talk about actually a conspiracy theory. We're going to talk about the moon landing. We're going to talk about NASA. We're going to talk about a lot of good stuff. And so that video that I was just showing you, um, I actually put it on our curiosity link. Um, do you know who this person is? Yes, who is who? Our daughter, that's right. She's our, our youngest daughter. And she's a 12th grader at Cassidy. She's about to graduate. And uh, she recorded this this weekend for a scholarship she's applying to do engineering. Um, because a lot of the things we are going to talk about, um, of course, we'll touch on technology. And um, the SIFT, why am I holding a football? Besides the fact that I like football. It's a lateral thing. Lateral thing? What is it? Lateral, can you remember? What's that? Reading. It is like a lateral pass, that's right, and it's a lateral reading, that's right. Because when we are going to go try and figure out, is this source somebody we should be listening to? We don't just listen to that source. Even though they may give us accurate information, you always want to check it, and that's why we want to go laterally, too. Okay, so uh, first off, on your sketch notes that you guys did, um, good job overall. Um, one of the things that I noticed with some of you is, when you're doing a sketch note, and I'm not going to, like, I won't turn the volume up on these, um, but when you're doing a sketch note, it is possible to just talk about really small details and never really connect kind of the big idea. And one of the things I want us to do is be thinking of the big ideas, because sketch noting is fun. Who, well, by the way, let me just ask this. Does anybody enjoy sketch noting? Does anybody really not? Like, it's you are like, this is not good at all. Okay, so we've got a mix back. Um, for a lot of people, it is enjoyable. Um, it may just be something that you think, oh, I just have to survive and do this. But remember, the main point of it is what? Find the main topic. Find details. the main topic. Find the main ideas. Okay, so in addition to getting some small details, try, and, and we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to take two days to do this one. We're going to watch this video. We're going to talk about it. We're going to sketch note it. Mm -hmm. um, but I want you to really try to focus in on some of the, the key ideas. So this last one that we did was by the odd ones out, James Ralston, right? James. Yeah. Ralston. Ralston. Yeah. And what was what was the main thing that he was trying to communicate about conspiracy theories? Do you think? Crazy the, people. There are crazy people. Okay, this is true. What else? Some of them are false. Okay. Some people have there's false information that's out there. That's true. What else? Um. Then what was one of the key ideas that you got from this? You should what? He says he likes to listen to them because of kind of entertainment, but he was encouraging us to be empathetic, right? And be sensitive to people, okay? Um, so, like this, I'm not saying that this is the best video in, that's ever been made about conspiracy theories, but one of the things that I definitely think he highlights is there are people who just like to hear about conspiracy theories. And by the way, do you think this is going to go away in 2022? Like, this is the last year we'll ever hear about conspiracy theories. Do you think that's yeah. going to happen? No, I don't think so. I think this is going to be stuff we're going to be hearing about for a long time. So, conspiracy theories are here. There's a lot of reasons for it. Um, and I probably need to say this right now, too. Um, like, what is a conspiracy? Does anybody have a definition of it yet? It's something I want you to be thinking about so that you can give me an answer to that. A conspiracy is just basically more than one person, usually in secret, deciding to do something. So let's say Grace Booz and I decide, ooh, we're going to have a video game tournament. Okay? okay. Well, it could be something as extreme as that. It doesn't have to involve bad stuff, is my point, though. And it doesn't have to involve violence or something like that. It could be, Grace, tell me a game you like to play. Uh, Board game, card game, any kind of game. Football. football. OK, so Grace and I are going to organize a football tournament. Um, and we're going to do this at Cassidy. Um, and we're going to maybe get some other people to come help us. We could have a conspiracy to do that. When we think about conspiracy theories, and a lot of times the Fruit Loop ones that we're talking about, it tends to be stuff that's secret, 
because we wouldn't have to be secret if we were making us, you know, we're going to have a football tournament or something. Um, and it also tends to be things that involve like accusations of bad stuff, of people doing things. Okay. All right. So what I'd like for you to do now is go ahead and open up your canvas if you're not already there. <clears throat> this is my sketch note I did yesterday in class, right? You guys are my second sixth grade computer class. This is my final sketch note. All right. What do you notice different between final and first one? Or first one copy I showed you. Evelyn, what's the difference? One does color, one doesn't. Okay. And we're talking a little bit about layers. Do you think this one is easier to look at or more appealing to look at? Or do you prefer the black and white? Yeah, I, like color color. I think so. And again, there's a lot of ways to sketch note. And I'm not telling you you have to absolutely draw star people or, or follow this. But this method is one that Rachel Smith, Rachel Smith mentioned in her video. And it's just using a thin black pen on one layer to kind of draw first. And then this took me about five or 10 minutes. Oops. I went in afterwards and on another layer, I put in the colors. Okay. I use some chalk and I use the highlighter. Okay. I'm not saying this is the greatest sketch note ever, but I think that this can be a more appealing sketch note and, and, and it might be something for you to try as a technique. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. So we are today. If you uh, would like to, in Google Classroom, um, follow along. We are going to be watching a video by a guy named J.P. Sears. And his video is, well, his channel is called Awaken with J.P. Um, the title of this lesson is Moon Hoax. And I have some slides that if you'd like to, uh, you can do a couple things. I have the Wikipedia page for him, which you're welcome to go, go see. I'm going to open up these slides as we talk about this. And we're going to continue to talk about SIP. And by the way, I didn't say this, and I don't think Surrey's connected. Um, but but uh, Gracie's on and Surrey's on. So I'm going to start trying to connect to our classes and record. And so anyway, if you happen to have to quarantine or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just, we're just going to try to record because there's going to be more, there are some more people that are absent now. So um, SIP, which is what we've got up here on this big poster, stop. Investigate the source, find trusted coverage, trace the original is kind of what we're introducing here. Now, I don't think you're going to find this idea of a Fruit Loop conspiracy theory right now in any kind of textbook. When I grew up, that was an I, that was something we would say, like, that's a Fruit Loop idea. And that just meant that was something that was kind of way out there. Okay. Is this a surprise to anybody, what you see on the screen right now? No. Does that shock you? Yes. Oh my gosh, I thought it was all true. Jordan, it's not true. So you guys are literally living in kind of the most confusing time ever, although there have been confusing times before. Um, have you guys studied the Revolutionary War at all, like when the United States broke away from Great Britain and that stuff? You know, one of the things that caused a lot of controversy then were the printing press, and people could make pamphlets, and so they printed all of this stuff, and not all of it was true. And so there were, you know, there was disinformation, and there was lots of different opinions, but certainly today with YouTube and with social media and the internet, oh my gosh, there's just so much information out there and we can't assume that it's all true. So SIF is a framework, it's a lens. How many of you wear glasses besides me? Is it I, I used Anybody to. wear contacts? Yep. So when you have glasses, you look at the world differently. Hopefully you see it better, right? And you want to have your glasses so you see the world better. Think about SIF kind of like that, all right? Uh, let's say the parts of SIF the first parts together. S stands for stop. Okay, let's say this together. Ready? Go. S stands for stop. I is investigate the source. F find better coverage. T trace claims, quotes, and media back to the original context. So this is um, our middle daughter Sarah is at UCO studying digital forensics and political science. It's kind of like that. You're, you're a forensic scientist. 
I don't know if you guys have ever watched police shows and crime shows. What do they have to do to try to figure out the crime sometimes? Investigate. They have to investigate. They have to go to the crime scene. They have to collect evidence. They have to figure out where did this stuff come from and what happened. And so that's a part of what we're doing with SIP. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how you figure out a, a Fruit Loop theory. Um, let me mention a couple uh, famous people that there's conspiracy theories about. Uh, do you know this person? Have you seen him before? Yes. Okay. What did he do? He sent he sent people to the moon and he stopped sent people Cuba, to the moon. That's stopped right. Cuba from getting bombed or something <laughs> like that. Missile crisis. What is what what was his name? John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. And what was his position? President. Yeah, he was president of the United States. So um, this is kind of cool, and I don't have this one linked, but this is an actual picture of my dad shaking hands with President Kennedy in May of 1963 when he graduated from the Air Force Academy. Now, who knows uh, what happened to President Kennedy? How did he die? He died by getting sniped from his car. He got killed by a sniper. Uh, they believe he was assassinated. Uh, where was that? It was actually not far from Oklahoma City, just south Texas. of Texas. In Texas, what city? Starts with yeah. D. Dallas. Dallas, Texas, November 1963. This was May of 1963. So this was about five months, six months before he was assassinated. And um, have any of you guys been to Dallas to what's called the Sixth Floor uh, Museum, the Sixth Floor Depository? Depository? Yep. Anybody? Okay, I would recommend going there. Dallas is not that far away. A lot of us sometimes will go down there for a visit or something like that. I go down and there. And if you have way. a chance to go, it is well worth going. You um, have headphones and there's all, it's in all these different languages. But up here on the sixth floor is where they think a guy named Lee Harvey, Lee Harvey Oswald took his rifle out and shot <laughs> the president's motorcade as it was going by. Okay, why am I even talking about this? There are conspiracy theories around President Kennedy. Did you know this? Mm -hmm. That he died? There are movies that have been made about it. There's all kinds of things. There's lots of stuff that swirl around um, his death. Um, who is this person? Elvis why is Presley. He, why is he famous? He he was a musician. He he like sang a lot. Yeah, he's kind of considered a father of rock and roll, right? Yeah. You know why he was so controversial and people were like, "Oh my gosh, you can't watch him on TV." You know what he did when he danced? He shook his hips. Bruh. Oh my gosh. Sometimes, oh we hear, sometimes we hear these things wrong. Like, I don't hip dancers exist. No, but it was a big deal back then. Uh, and, uh, and so anyway, how did Elvis God. how did Elvis die? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't an assassination. Anybody know? He just overdose. Overdose. OD of drugs, right? He was from Memphis, Tennessee, and his little uh, have you ever been to Graceland to where he like nope. it, it, that's the Home of Elvis. It's a good question. They're not right? happy. What happened to um, Michael Jackson? Yeah, his his was an overdose as well. I remember how he died. He saw his ambulance on a security camera. So there you go. These these are the things that, especially when it's a high profile, famous person and it's death. Sometimes there are all these theories and things like that that surround it. Uh, ben. I heard a theory that like Elvis. I don't know. Maybe it was not Elvis. It was so boring and like. Correct. Yes, the idea that Elvis is still alive. This is this is something that we sometimes hear. Okay. So what I want to say about conspiracy theories is number one, there are real conspiracies. Okay, and real things happen. Uh, the moon land, the moon program, or the Apollo program in the United States. You know where the scientists that led it came from. It was a secret for years and years. I'll give you a hint. It was in Europe. And they had a guy who was not very good at all leading their country, and they fought a whole world war to defeat them. This is where the scientists came from. Uh, the angry man was just going to That's right. Who was that person? Hitler. Yes. And what was the name of his party in, in the country of Germany? No, no. That, that one. Nazis. I don't want to say it. The Nazis. Yeah. That the Nazis. one. So, like, literally, we brought the scientists, because they were way ahead of the rest of the world, over to the United States, and they helped us build our program. So that really happened, and that was a real thing. <clears throat> but there are also conspiracy theories that are wild and out there. And so this little acrostic, is, as it's called, it's spelled conspire. 
I want you to watch for these things in the video we're going to watch. Okay, and I really am going to start the video here in just a minute. Contradictory. If he says things that don't make sense, like that can't be right. Overriding suspicion. We heard that in the uh, James Ralston video where he talked about targeted in individuals. By the way, if you want to put the name of the video that we're going to see, um, this is going to be called 13 Reasons the Moon Landing Was Fake. You can just call it Moon Hoax. You could say Moon Landing, question mark. And what is today's date? You got to put the date on. So it's January the 19th. 19th. Today's the 19th, 2022. Okay, nephrous intent. Based on this little picture, what do you think nephrous means? Love Pain. Good or bad? Today's the 19th. Today's the 19th. It's my dad's birthday. What is this thing supposed to look like? That little icon. Devil. Yeah, a devil. So, nephrous means evil. So, somebody who's always assuming evil, negative intent, that something must be wrong. Okay, this couldn't be a coincidence. This couldn't be explained some other way. Persecuted victim, that's like when James Ralston talked about targeted individuals. They're following me. The government's out to get me. I'm always being targeted. The government shot me with a laser. Immune to evidence. That means, you know, it, is this something good for scientists to be immune to evidence? No. no. You better be immune. Sometimes right now, actually, people are getting upset that rules change about, um, like, quarantine and stuff like that. Like, right, it used to be 10 days and now it's five. But when we pay attention to evidence and research, there are things that change. But if when you see somebody who's like, no, nope, I don't want to hear anything. I don't believe any of it. I don't want to hear any of it. That can be a sign of a Fruit Loop conspiracy theory. And then this one, you're definitely going to see reinterpreting randomness. It's when they're like, ooh, but if you take that word and you turn it around and you move this letter, then it spells moon or something. That's, like. what, that, that, that's what people are confusing with Neil, Neil Armstrong. Neil A. Spelled backwards, alien. Yes, yes. Those are the kind of things we're talking about. Okay, so are you ready to sketch no? Yes, no? Sort of. All right, here we go. Um, and again, we're taking two days to do this. We're going to do the best we can to get the sketch note, and then we're going to be writing a script, actually, to narrate this to talk about these big ideas. All right? Here we go. So this is JP2. Yep, we're sketch noting this right now. There were six alleged moon landings between 1969 and 1972, and there's been zero moon landings since. Seems a little suspicious, doesn't it? No. Well, that's because we never went to the moon. Let me prove it to you with 13 reasons why the moon landing was fake. Why would America fake the moon landing? Well, at the time, the U.S. was in the heat of the Cold War with the Soviet Union. And the space race was important because of the fear that the Soviet Union might weaponize space by putting missile launch sites on the moon, Bruh. leaving the U.S. defenseless. Now, the U.S. had already been beaten by the Soviet Union in putting the first person into space. They asserted their dominance over us like the dog whisperer putting a hostile rescue dog from Tijuana in its place. But if we could be the first to the moon, then we'd be the new alpha dog in the world. But in this case, what creates the alpha dog isn't the size of the fight in the dog. It's the size of the lie in the dog that's in the fight. Thus, the U.S. became the new alpha dog, and we were the first nation to fake the moon landing. The U.S. government also faked the moon landing to distract the public from the Vietnam War, which wasn't very popular. It's like, if I'm doing something you disapprove of, and I can distract you from it, then you don't notice your disapproval of the thing I'm still doing. Look over there, a moon landing. Now let's look at some hard evidence. The flag waving in the wind. Now take a look at the astronauts proudly planting the American flag on the moon as it gracefully waves in the wind. There's just one problem with this. There's no wind on the moon, Einstein. Evidence of a hoax. No less kicked up on the lunar landing. Take a close look at the lunar module. You'll see there's no dust on the foot pads, and it didn't leave a blast crater either. This would be approximately like diving into a swimming pool in your car and not making a splash. Guess what? The moon's surface is covered in dust. It's not like landing in a Walmart parking lot covered in pavement. So it would be impossible to land on the moon's surface without picking up a dust storm. No stars in any photos. There are no stars in any photos taken from the moon. Now, were the stars just blotched out by the intense inner city streetlights that are on the moon? Or are there just no stars visible from the pretend moon inside of a Hollywood soundstage? I don't know. I'm just asking questions here. Pictures have the same background. Look at these two photos. Two different locations on the moon, 
but each have the exact same background. Looks like the site designers got a little lazy and decided they'd go with the same background for two different fake locations. The crosshairs. Crosshairs were etched into the lens of the camera the astronauts were using, yet in a number of photos, an object allegedly on the moon appeared in front of the crosshairs. This is foul play. The only way an object could appear in front of the crosshairs is if the object were superimposed on the photo. Fake photos trying to fake a real moon landing. Pause. That's three minutes. We're going to keep going. I'm going to show you what I've done so far, and then you guys continue to kind of work on your drawings. I'm doing this thing with, with black because I'm going to fill in with colors. What is this supposed to look like, do you think? The, the symbol. Symbol of what? Russia. Ah, Russia. So, yes, that is the flag of Soviet Union, which was also called the USSR, which was Russia before it broke up. Russia it was a province of the USSR. So they're talking about the Cold War. They're talking about the United States. So what is this supposed to be? USA. Yeah. All right. So I wrote Cold War competition, and I tried to draw some flags. All right. What what is a snowflake? Guess what? You don't know if there's this okay. man doesn't know this man doesn't know if there's dust on the moon. He's Was never the been Cold there. War always cold? No. Yeah. So it heated up in places like, what was he talking about yeah. distracting? Trying to distract people from what? There was a war that was not popular. Yeah. Vietnam War, okay. Yeah. So uh, in fact, I didn't get that written down. So Vietnam War. Although we call it the Vietnam War, it affected a lot of other countries too. It was in Southeast Asia. It affected Laos, it affected Cambodia. Thailand was our, was our ally. Um, okay, so then they started to get into some reasons. Flag waving, why did he say that? Wouldn't have happened. No wind. Oh, okay, no wind. Now, that's just interesting. We were talking about this yesterday. So let's talk about the dust thing. Okay, so there's dust on the moon. How does dust float around? Wind. Or yeah, and in force. order to feel the wind or to have wind, what do you have to have inside the atmosphere? Air. Or I even said it. Yeah, you have to have an atmosphere. You have to have air. So that begs an interesting question. Like, how could dust, like, float around or whatever if you didn't have... Well, I guess I, I guess I could see what he means because like you can jump around and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So I think what he means is like the force of it landing didn't like pay, like right. pace up some dust. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what he means. Ooh, Ben, that's the question. In fact, the video we're gonna watch next. We're gonna keep doing this for one more lesson, but the next video we're gonna watch is exactly what you said. Ben, ask it again. Ask the question. Do we have the technology to fake it? What is this thing over here? Um, on the side of the wall, the side, the side of Lila, a green screen, and like, what, what do I have in my hand right here? A phone. Oh, did that a exist phone. in 1969? I think TVs did. <laughs> we had TVs with cameras, but the technology we have now, like, it'd be so much easier to fake a moon landing. So Ben, that I'm glad you're thinking of that question because that's exactly where we're going next. Okay, so no stars in the pictures, um, and then crosshairs. Same background, okay? Anything that you got on here or you got on your drawing that I didn't get quite yet? Uh, the the why would they do it? Why would they do it? And the, uh, I mean, I put Just the question? Yeah. Why? Uh-huh. Why would they fake it? Yeah. And then I just put, and then underneath that, I put like a number one dog. Like the alpha the top dog. dog. Yeah, the yeah. alpha dog. All right. And as we're going to see, um, what do comedians, how do comedians make their money? They make jokes. They make jokes. They make people laugh. Okay, and we're gonna we're, we'll look a little bit more, learn a little bit more about JP here. Yeah. I want to draw a picture of this man on the moon. Okay. Uh, is it, well, yeah, let me ask this. is anybody struggling to try to figure out how to draw a particular shape? I tried drawing the foot of the. Does this even look like a camera at all? Kind of. Not really, but a little Fill bit. Okay. Fill okay. Fill what do we say we could go to to try to find? Search okay. icons. Yeah, the noun project, right, icons. So I did that, and so here's a, a few simple cameras. Um, actually, maybe I should do another little one. This is like old school, right? That's not like a, you know, yeah, old digital camera. Okay, are we ready to keep going? Uh, All right. Well, you just draw the Instagram camera. Yeah, yeah. You want me to watch? Draw the, the Instagram, Instagram symbol? Camera. That one's easy because it's just like a little square. Yeah, that's true. All right, there we go. Continuing on. So, four, three minutes. At least I looked at where we stopped. Three minutes. 
Okay. Cascading shadows. There's one source of light on the moon. It's called the sun. Yet some photos have shadows going at two different angles, suggesting multiple light sources, which suggests studio lighting, which suggests not moon lighting. Not to mention photos where the astronauts are backlit by the sun, yet you can still see the detail in front of the astronauts. Hashtag studio lighting. Now, even getting to the moon alive would be impossible because of the Van Halen radiation belt. The Van Allen radiation belt. No one could survive the trip through this intense radiation belt that surrounds the Earth. Can a cat survive being put in a microwave? No. Which proves astronauts can't survive being put through the Van Allen radiation belt. Buzz Aldrin doing his best, Mike Tyson. Now, in 2002, Buzz Aldrin punched a reporter who was denying the moon landing ever happened. Quite the reaction. Seems like old Buzz was feeling a little insecure about something, wasn't he? Now, yeah. how did the U.S. fake the moon landing? I've got two words for you, Stanley Kubrick. He was hired by the government to direct and film the fake moon landing inside a Hollywood soundstage. And he could never tell the truth because if he did, they would kill him and he knew it. That's why in his 1980 movie, The Shining, he revealed the truth through a trail of secret messages. First, take a look at the kid Danny, who obviously represents Stanley Kubrick himself in the film. He's wearing an Apollo 11 sweater which tells you Kubrick was Apollo 11. Next, take a look at the scene involving room 237. Room 237 obviously represents the moon because it's approximately 237,000 miles from the Earth. And take a look at the room key. It says room no 237, which means no moon. Plus, if you take the N from the word no, use it to replace the R in the word room, and flip the word backwards, you've got the word moon. And then after Danny enters the forbidden room 237, which represents the moon landing that took place behind closed doors, his sweater is tattered, he has marks on his throat, and he won't tell his mother what happened. This represents NASA's stranglehold on Kubrick to keep silent about the moon landing hoax. The cases of Tang by Jack's head in the storage closet correlate to Tang being on the Apollo missions and how the truth is supposed to be kept in the closet. We could also then reason to believe that the psychotic break of Jack Nicholson's character is Kubrick's portrayal of what the pressure was like of keeping such a huge secret for so long. And some would even say that the whole movie was Kubrick's way of apologizing for being a part of the biggest lie in human history. Stanley Kubrick's whole intent of The Shining was quite poetic in nature. Let the truth live beyond him. And indeed it did. Kubrick allegedly died in 1999 of a heart attack. Yeah, not very likely. It's more probable the government finally got their eyes wide open to how Kubrick spilled the truth about the moon landing 19 years earlier in The Shining, and then decided to execute the do not talk clause in their contract, if you know what I mean. So NASA, we haven't been back to the moon for nearly 50 years. Why is that? But NASA's like, uh, yeah, uh, in the past 50 years, technology's actually gotten worse. Yeah, the experts say human knowledge is doubling every 13 months. And yeah, your smartphone has more computing power than all of NASA's computers combined in 1969. But aside from all that, technology is actually getting worse, making it impossible to go back to the moon. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much our airtight reason for why we haven't been back to the moon for 50 years. And all follow-up questions will be answered with the term budget cuts. You know what, NASA? I don't buy into your Cold War winning, deceiving the American people propaganda. Moon landing? Fake. Oh, and by the way, the Earth is flat. If you want to watch my video proving how that's absolutely true, click here. Hashtag flat Earth. All right. There this you dude go. says that the Earth is flat when well, he literally has a globe in his house. Okay. <laughs> what are, and, and guess what? Flat. Guess what we call that? We call that contra. Dictory, right? Because if there's two things, you're like, wait a second, is that a round earth? And you're saying it's fine. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I'd like you to continue working on your sketch notes. Uh, how about the things that I wrote? Um, who was Buzz Aldrin? Said Buzz was mad, he punched somebody? He was the second or the person on the moon, other yeah. than Neil Armstrong. Yeah, there were three people. There was, there was Collins. Yeah, and so what was how why was he saying that was evidence that it was fake? Because he was feeling insecure. Yeah. Do you think do you think if you did something like walk on the moon and you had people continually coming up to you and saying, You never did that. That was the right do you think that could 
ever like get under Do you think he even that, do you think that was even true? What? That he punched someone? It was. Yeah, and because it was on television. Like that was actually yeah. documented. Um I'm sure he did, and I'm sure NASA wasn't very, very happy with him. Um, now, how fast were these things coming at us in this video? Fast. Yes, and that's yeah. one of the things that's kind of overwhelming, too, is sometimes, and, and I've seen this with other kinds of conspiracy theories, too, they'll just load on so much, so much, so much, you're like, whoa, and it's so hard to being? process it. Yeah, oh, by the way, what's the first step of this? Uh, ah, because when we are not sure of the trusted source or the information, ideally, and we don't have time to do this all the time, we kind of stop and we got to, we've got to go through this process. We've got to investigate the source. So um, I tried to draw studio lighting. I wrote Kubrick. What did you guys think about the room 237? That was a stupid. <laughs> that was the reinterpreting randomness. Right? Because he's saying, oh, but if you move this and you take the end and then you move it over here, whoop! Oh, if you take the alphabet, rearrange it, you spell conspiracy! That's right. Whoa! <laughs> exactly. And you take out you know, half the letters. Okay. Um, so, I want you to continue working on your sketch notes to improve them. I'm going to do my color colorization a little bit later. I'm going to mute my volume. Play this through. Let's just do a quick. Can you just, like talk about it? You will, but not today. Not today. Today we're just trying to get our sketch note done, and then we're going to be making a script. We're kind of. Yeah, actually. Well, this is what we're going to talk about. Well, okay. Before we do this, let me. No, but like, is he just doing it to be like, like funny or something? Okay. Or is he just, like, let's really let's check him out a little bit. Guess what? This is investigate the source. Okay. So this is a YouTube video that I've put in a slideshow. How can I go to the actual YouTube page? Where do I click on this? Um, watch on YouTube. Okay. Bottom left, watch on YouTube. I can also click the title. Any of those, boom, takes me out. Okay, let's check, let's check him out a little bit. So, how many subscribers? 2.2 2 million. Is that, a lot? is that a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what does the check mark mean? Easy verified. Is that easy to get? Like, oh, you have to be a pretty big time YouTuber to get that. Okay, this video, how many views? Almost a, a lot. Almost a million. Okay. Um, now, it's also saying ultra spiritual life episode. But that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Okay. Because it doesn't say like history revealed or the history channel or something like ultra spiritual life. How can I get more information about this guy? Search him. I can, but uh, before, I, before I leave, because by the way, this is not lateral reading yet. We're just vertical reading. We're on his YouTube page, okay? But I can still get some more information about him before we go so lateral. Like actual page. Exactly. We're going to click on his name, his channel name, and then <laughs> we're not going to watch these. And by the way, guys, I'm not showing you him because I'm like, oh, let's all subscribe to him and watch him. Yeah. Um, he's an example. This is an example of how the information that's out there can be wild. Sometimes people are going to watch it for entertainment, but we want to be really careful when we draw conclusions about what we believe. Okay. So let's just see the titles of his recent uploads. Learning the Masterful Charm of Kamala Harris. Why Good People Obey harmful mandates. What do you think this is about? Vaccine and COVID. Vaccines and COVID. The narrative is crumbling. People that are still in denial about Bitcoin, Nancy Pelosi, Insider Trader of the Year. Okay, what are, kinds of topics are these? Um, political, political, especially mentioning Pelosi, mentioning the pandemic. All right. If he's so full of conspiracy theories, I don't see him yet I'm mentioning about, oh. um, wait, what's her name? Now, what do we call this video that's on the very front of the channel? Uh, homepage. It's a homepage, but featured video, maybe. What is there another way to say it? Yeah, it's basically the one that you choose. It could be any of your videos, right? But they say, this is the one I want you to see. <laughs> What's the title of this? Advice for the people running Biden. Who is, what are, who are they talking about? Who's Biden? President. President, President Joe Biden. Okay. What do they mean running Biden? Like voting. Is he like a robot or like a puppet or something? Uh, it kind of sounds like he thinks that, right? Okay, so, oh, and what's he saying here? Check my new merch out. Merch! This <gasps> loves merch! So what do you think he wants us to do? Buy it. Yeah, oh look, and take a standing attention to join my Awakened Warriors. Okay, here's his about page, and when I click on his about page, 
What he says about himself is this. I'm a comedian and freedom fighter. Free speech and fun are what I stand for. Help build Zion. And then for business like, inquiry. Who thinks like this? There's actually a whole lot of folks who, I mean, the world is a diverse place. And there's all kinds of ideas. And I'm not saying that he shouldn't be saying this. But, well, let's let's talk about benevolent. When he says, I'm a comedian, what does that tell us? Ha, 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 funny. He's self-identifying as somebody who, like, either for his hobby, but in this case, it sounds like professional. He's making people laugh. Okay, he's doing things to have have people laugh and to pay attention. Well, this is an interesting question. Okay, so this is vertical reading. We are investigating the source. Who is ready to catch a football and not allow it to hit their Chromebook? Because if we break your Chromebook, we're going to all be in trouble. All right, here we go, Grace. Ready? All right, so we're going to go lateral. Where? How do we do this? We, we did a whole sketch note kind of about this. What can we Google? We know his name is J.P. Sears, okay? We could just put his name in, but then what, what are we going to do here? The Wikipedia page. So let's do it. Let's put J.P. Sears. Yeah, I've got a, like, a Chrome extension that shows me a different Google Earth view every time I open a new channel. I thought I clicked a picture of him more than six for a second. I was thinking. There's all kind of, yeah, there's a lot of weird things that come up. Okay, J.P. Sears, Wikipedia. That's it. This isn't going to work with everybody, but with YouTubers that are verified, that have millions of viewers, they pretty much all have Wikipedia pages. And most, like, news sites and stuff will have it. So there it is. I put it in your Google Classroom also. Oh, look at him. Isn't that a cute picture? He's so handsome. Okay. So born uh, 1981, known as online, Awaken with JP, is a conservative American YouTuber, comedian, life coach, and businessman. He produces satirical videos. All right, now, do we want to use this Wikipedia page as our only source for him? No. We can just believe everything here. What can we always go down to on the Wikipedia page? The, re the, the sources with a citation, okay? So here are, uh, so in some cases, like he did a TEDx talk, and that's a link to his TEDx talk. But here is something from the Sydney Morning Herald. Does anybody know where Sydney is? Australia. I don't have a good Australian accent. But that's kind of like the New York Times of Australia, the Sydney Morning Herald. And here's an article, YouTube comedian or real life coach, who is the real J.P. Sears? All right, the humorous healer. Okay, he's amusing and confusing, millions of people around the world. But internet sensation, J.P. Sears likes it that way. Here's an example of how we can use Wikipedia to get more information and to also go to sources that are published, right? Because Wikipedia information needs to be verified. It needs to have some support. It needs to be published. People are not supposed to just make stuff up and be like, I'm putting that on Wikipedia. You can do it. Wasn't there Wikipedia? Take it off. What's her name, Grace? Oh, yeah. Wasn't there Wikipedia? Yeah. It said that she died. Bruh! Yes, and there's all kinds of the things that will be put up on pages, but that's what we kind of touched on a little bit with that Wikipedia lesson is the community will try to edit that and try to say, okay, wait a minute. Is there a, a source that's credible who said that? How do we how do we tell that that's correct? Okay, so all of that being said, let me go back to the video. I'm going to mute the audio and let's just do it. We got about eight minutes. Your goal today is to get your sketch note as complete as you can. Okay, you don't have to turn it in today. Um, but let's do a quick see, think, and wonder. So of the stuff we've seen, remember, see is just what's going on. All right. Think is what do you think is going on? And wonder is, of course, what does this make you wonder? So any of those things. Caroline? I wonder is how long did it take him to grow the hair and make the cardboard photos in the back? <laughs> yeah. How long to prep? I'll just, I'll just do that. How long to prep, to prepare? <laughs> Does this make us think credible or not when he is in front of a cardboard, like, you know, is that a, a refrigerator box or something? Yeah, probably. And he's wearing this tie. But is he trying to really look like a professor? Do you think? <laughs> nope. Not really. Not really. Okay, what else? Caroline's wondering how long it took him to prepare. Um, Caroline Blakewell. Then? Okay, where did he get his info? Because he really doesn't tell us that. 
And by the way, that's something that's hard about video. All right. Um, you know, video, unlike a paper with footnotes and stuff like that, don't necessarily, uh, it doesn't always have foot things you can click to where to get the information. I'm going to scoot back a second. What was he including here, actually? Because these are these were not just cardboard drawings. What's that? What's that a picture of? What's that a picture of? Uh, the war. The war. Protests in Vietnam. Helicopters in Vietnam. So he's referencing real events. And I think you see Richard Nixon. That's Nixon talking about the Richard war. Richard Nixon. Okay. Yep. <laughs> That was a doctor picture showing an astronaut with a Mountain Dew in there. Um, and that probably is a real Apollo picture of a flag waving. What else? I'm going to put that under C. I see real and I'm going to say doctored pictures. What do I mean by doctored pictures? Edited. Edited. Some people would say Photoshop, right? Is that hard or easy to do now? The doctor yeah. picture. Kind of easy. It's easier than it ever has been. To really trick people can be hard, but video with deep fake videos now, we're seeing you know people being able to fake that too. Okay, we haven't done anything about think. Who? Somebody tell me something you think is going on here. Well, what do you think is going on here? Okay. What do you think is what do you think his intent is? What is his goal? Okay. I'm going to put get attention. Because what do YouTubers get the more views they get? Attention. Moolah. Moolah. The technical word for this, Gavin has said, is moolah. Right? Yeah. And if you have millions of views, is, does that mean you're getting a lot of money? Yes. Definitely. And he is a comedian. So perhaps he wants to get our attention. Okay? Mia, tell us something you either see, think, or wonder about this video. Um, yeah, okay, so he may be um, sort of targeting an audience that's already thinking about that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to apply targeting. Uh, maybe we can just say conspiracy theorists, because this is one of the things that is both good and bad about YouTube and the internet. Um, if you really want to learn about something and you're on the internet, is it possible that you might be able to learn about it? Yeah, and that's why we got to make really good choices about what we are going to learn about. Have you ever heard of this goes down a rabbit hole? You know what that story that that references? Because it gets Alice in Wonderland, Chase, that's right, because she went down into the rabbit hole. So this is something that actually does happen now, especially when you find somebody you're like, oh, I want to know more about that. And then you search for that kind of thing. In fact, YouTube and Facebook and companies have really been criticized for this because in some cases, you know, people have become really radicalized and have really gotten some pretty messed up ideas. And this is interesting, right? Because the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution protects, among other things, what? The, the freedom of speech. speech. Now, it doesn't say you can say whatever you want, whenever you want. It says that the government can't restrict your freedom of speech. But that's also, you know, limited in some other cases. Um, Caroline? Yeah. Yes, I think he is taking on a persona, right? And when, when we hear, oh, I'm a flat earther, I kind of think immediately we're like, oh, okay. You know, oh, that, you're, you're, you're in that, that kind category. Of person. Exactly. So, but, and he's not hiding that either, right? Sometimes to get to the fact like that, you might have to dig further into other articles. But like he's saying that right here in the video. And we can read it in other places too, like that Sydney Morning Herald article was saying he's confusing. All right, let's talk about this Jack Nicholson stuff. Again, I am not recommending that any of you go watch PG-13 on our movies, okay? I am not. And honestly, I have not seen the entire Shining movie, the Shining and I do not recommend it. It is a horror movie, and I do not, yeah, I wouldn't recommend this, okay? But what do you think about all this talk about Stanley Kubrick, The Shining, this room number? What do you think about all that? What, Why? What do you think, Mia? Center, 
Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay. So making, well, I'm going to actually use the same words you know, that were on that slide. Reinterpreting randomness. Okay. Now, <laughs> you guys ever analyze literature in English class? Like what the author meant here was, yeah. did that ever happen? So there and and authors and creators of movies and books and stuff like that they do have intentions, and sometimes this can be kind of fun. It's kind of interesting, but at some point it can also be dangerous because his last thing he claimed is this is the biggest lie in human history. Is that a pretty big claim? Like the moon landing was the biggest lie in human history? Yeah. Yeah, it is a huge claim. All right. So the good news is we are not done. We're going to do. Another day with this, but we're going to be narrating our sketch notes next time using a script. So if you want to polish your sketch note a little bit, you may do that and have a great day. I will see you on Friday. Caroline! Caroline!